Hello, 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 and welcome to my channel. We are back with Jump Punk. And we are here to see what it is like, what it would take to completely set up a fully automated line to fill up this monolith too. And I'm pretty sure that I have accomplished that. It wasn't easy, but I have accomplished that. There it is. Behold. The complete automated line. All in its glory. That's all three lines. All three valves going into the machine. Into the monolith. So basically what I'm going to do right now. I got like the for forges. Yeah the forges turned off. And I'm only filling up certain areas. Because the drones. The drones are so unreliable. But before we go down and take a tour of this wonderful base. Let me remind everybody, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click that subscribe button down there. It means an awful lot to me. I like to try to get at least one on this video. And be sure to leave a comment. I love interacting in the comments. And um, click that like button. Let's get on with it. Alright, here we are. I'd like to start over there at the power grid to talk about that, but I want to start with the drones. Because the drones is a big factor in this, making this work. And right now, the drones are pretty unreliable. As you see, two of them are just sitting there. I don't know. Did I make too many? Maybe. Um... So to begin our tour, we're going to start back here with the drone pads. Because the first thing you really need to do when you first start out with this is get your alloy making machine going. And your alloy making machine is going to be, let me explain this to you, three drone pads. Two drone pads getting scrap metal, the two outside ones. And then your middle inside one will be getting rare metals. Do you see this has got scrap metal in it? And then this will have rare metal in it. And the other one's got scrap metal. So your middle one here is going to be making the aluminum ingots. Your two outside ones are going to be making the steel ingots. Because of the ratio, the 2 to 1 ratio of making ing or alloys, it's two steels to one aluminum you're going to end up having aluminum start to overpower you in the, in the system because the steel can't keep up. It's using twice as much. But this is being reworked. Hopefully soon we'll be able to assign slots to different inputs. So as you see here, I got aluminum coming in here and I got steel coming in here. So we should be able to go to the slot and click on it and assign it how many storage slots it's allowed to use so that way it won't be overpowering so hopefully that's soon we get that soon but for now to compensate the two to one ratio we're splitting the aluminum into another forge over here and it's doing the same thing with that third line that we made with steel coming in getting a little dark here all right, our sun is coming up. So now we can kind of see what's going on here. But you see, I got one, two, three drone pads going into three different auto foundries that's making our uh, ingots. And then the aluminum is split between two forges here. One steel and a split aluminum goes into that one. A split aluminum and that steel is going into that one. So that's the first thing you want to do is get that set up. Then you can start collecting, um, you can start making alloys. And let me tell you, if your drones are doing their job, this thing will just crank out alloys. Right now, we got glass coming into where the alloy goes into. So we got 400 alloys in here. All this I got filled up only because the drones are not reliable at the moment. So I filled up all my ingots, they're all full, same thing with the steel, they're all full. So this is ready to start making ingots, but I wanted to put ingots in here first 
so that the glass didn't overtake it before the ingots could take up at least a couple slots. So we got 400 ingots to one, two, three, four, to 300 glass. So I'm hoping that works out all right until we get this filled up. But my idea here is to cut, I got one power line going to the grid. I'm gonna cut that power grid and turn on all these machines, including the super compressor, so that when we, when we hook that wire back up, that line and these two lines are all going to kick on at the exact same time. I will show you inside that the boards are showing zeros right now. I went back to an earlier say before we did all that in the last video. So that is completely empty. I started from scratch. We got everything going. So we got the sand going to all three lines making glass for all three lines. Same thing with the filters. I split that three different times. I'm not making filters on three lines because the filters they come out in 50s and I think they shouldn't have too much of a problem keeping up. So down here is pretty much the same thing. We got another six drones. Um, do I, do I, no, I got just the three drones. So because we have two forges what is going on here? To compensate the two to one ratio, making the alloy with the ingots and the steel and the aluminum, we have um, one forge going to the one line and one forge going to the other line. Where down there on that first line we was at, I got both forges looping back into the same line. So they're not being split between the two lines, which, you know, if we had a fourth, I would have done. So let's get over here. I can give you a better view from up here. Nice little catwalk my brother made for us. This is pretty much it for the setup. Like I said, you know, that first one, the only difference between the three lines is that one all the way in the far distance, you see the air extractor getting the nitrogen. Over there we got the ground extractor getting in the phosphorus and I think right there in the middle this drone is getting our phosphorus or our potassium right yeah so he's getting the potassium so that's the only thing that's different between all three is each three has got its own particular um, refinery making the refined whatever it is that's coming in other than that, you just need to set up your um, alloys and your glass and you're off and going. So let's go over here and let's talk about the power grid here. As you see, I kind of overdid it. I have, I think, like 84 um, wind turbines going. And all that's hooked up to a series of batteries that I don't think are ever going to get touched. That one power cable coming off the battery right here. That's the one power cable that powers this entire grid system. So once I cut that power, I'm going to go in there and turn on all the foundries, all the super compressors and get that going. Now if you look back here in the corner, that's my drone making area. I have a teleporter back there so I can teleport to the front to get more alloy, to make some gears, whatever I gotta do. But I have an assembler and uh, a fabricator back there for making everything that I would need to make. I just need to come up here once in a while and make me some copper or ingots to bring back over there to make more electronics. So much electronics is involved with that. But basically, let me show you the power grid here. I think I have like five or six foundries and a couple refineries to turn on or something but maybe another hundred on the grid usage so I'm not even using half of half of that so we could eliminate half of those what I did was I did them in groups of threes 
so two groups would do one power pole so you can do a power pole every two groups and um, that was just enough holes to um, be able to link everything up like that and then I wasn't sure about the power so I built another tier and did the same thing again and then like I said all that's tied into these batteries here in the front You can see we are completely empty. Zero one thousand, zero one thousand, zero one thousand. So my brother's down there. He cut the power. We're gonna go through. We're gonna turn everything on, and we'll flip back when we get ready to hook the power back up. Okay, this has been a lot of trial and error here. Uh, we probably did maybe. 10 or 15 test runs and a whole lot of troubleshooting but I think I finally got one complete working system here all we have to do is flip on that power line and all this stuff is going to kick into gear at one time so um, let's get in here I want to show you the board we're standing at zeros we're gonna run upstairs uh, my original layout that I showed you in the tour was kind of wrong. I had to add in a crusher, but um, it's basically still the same. But like I said, there were some power lines that didn't get connected and a whole bunch of other troubleshooting, but I am pretty proud of the system as it stands. Oh, this is going to be glorious. We are almost at the top here. Oh, so many elevators. Be sure to give me a good thumbs up. You got you got a little bit of time to click that little thumbs button. Here we are. So you'll notice none of the drones are doing their thing. Because all the power is off. So they're just kind of hovering around waiting for power to come back on. But that is it. That is the, let me see, can I zoom out some more? Yeah. That's the complete lineup. Until things are changed and they um, give us a um, story slot assignment, this is the way it's gotta be. Okay, I think we're ready for power. Kick it on. So he's gonna plug in that one wire that's left over there. Here we go. And um, it's going to kick on everything. It is on. It is on and running. So now we just got to watch the three lines and um, just run down here. We should start seeing some results here pretty quick. It looks like everything's moving as it should be. Oh, I am seeing vials. Looks like all the lines are working. I ain't. There it is. There's the third vial. Now they're all going. All right. So now we're gonna come in here, take a look at our board. They should start populating. We got one on the phosphorus. There we go, one on the nitrogen. And the potassium came in last, there it goes. So we're gonna sit here and let that run and hopefully it does a good job and no more hangups and it just keeps running. And um, we'll periodically come back and check out these tubes because we know these tubes are gonna start to fill up. Kind of see, up. Oh, I see green on this one, blue on that one, and then this one here I think is white. As soon as we get like a percent in here, it's gonna take a little bit of time. We got eight on potassium, nine. We got 10 on nitrogen, 11. We got eight on phosphorus, nine. Alright, so we got a little bit of liquid in the tubes here. And all three of them. Oh, my battery just ran dead. How embarrassing. Don't look. Alright, so we're going to let this sit and run, and um, 
we're gonna see if it works from beginning to end and hopefully our little drones out there as unreliable as they are are able to keep up with this line and keep it going but if I happen to have to go out there and do something I'll let you know what I did do but I got it I did it I did it I did it I got a whole complete assembly line running on full automation pat on my back for that yes all right so we'll flip back when this thing is still going and I'll show you the progress as we get there um, see you in a flip So my worst fear has come true. Um, our potassium ore extracting drones have gone MIA on me. I don't know where they're at, but they're screwing up everything. Like everything else is kind of working. I mean, some things like the filters are not being produced fast enough, so we have to compensate by pulling out stuff to make room for them. Um, but all that will be fixed once they fix that conveyor belt storage assignment type thing. But right now, I think, is that my drone over there? No, he's not heading in that direction. I don't know where my potassium drones are, but hopefully they show up soon. But if not, I might have to save it, start it over, and hope they come back again. That's for my aluminum ore. That's being split in the middle there. All right, we got to about 30% and everything was running super, super great. And then everything came to a complete standstill. We don't know why, we, so we went out and looked and all my drones have disappeared. I have, let me count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen drones flying out there, and I can only locate two of them. They've all disappeared on me. I don't know if this is some sort of a glitch or what's going on, but there's just nothing I can do about that. I have no control over the drones. If you look here, we should be able to see at least one or two drones out of 18, 16 drones. There should be one or two of them right here at all times coming and going. I got one working drone that's moving back and forth. And one that's just stuck up there. He just won't come down and do his job. There's nothing I can do. I don't know what to do. So we did build a working system. We did get to almost 30%. And then for whatever reason, I don't know what happened to the drones, but they just, I don't know, committed mutiny and went somewhere else. So let me know what you guys think of my complete setup. Right now, with my jerkiness, this thing is maxing out my CPU. I do have an i5 2.9 gigahertz and it's right up there at 95% it never used to ride up there so I don't know something in the update hopefully that gets fixed in the future but um, yeah thanks for watching see you guys next turn